we find the value of inductance of a particular inductor? My name is Rishi Ramju and welcome to the Backbench Engineering Community where I make engineering easy for you. So let me ask you guys the obvious question again. How can we find the value of the inductance of a particular inductor? Well, let's find out. So the inductance of a particular inductor is measured using a particular bridge-like structure which is referred to as the Maxwell's bridge. We use a Maxwell's bridge to find the value of the inductance of an unknown inductor. So this is how we form a particular Maxwell's bridge to find the value of an unknown inductance. So here first we will have an AC source like this. This AC source is connected to a particular bridge-like structure over here which is referred to as the Maxwell's bridge. So in the case of a Maxwell's bridge first here it will have a particular resistor and a particular inductor like this. And the same resistor and inductor would be present over here like this. But here it will have a resistor like this and here it will have another resistor like this. So this is a Maxwell's bridge. So here it will have a resistor and an inductor and here it will have a resistor and an inductor. So now over here a particular AC galvanometer is placed. So here in this condition say if this is L1 and this is the value of the inductance that we have to find then what we do is that this particular resistor and this particular inductor is replaced by a variable resistor and a variable inductor. So a variable resistor is a resistor whose value of resistance can be varied by us. We can actually change the value of the resistance and the same comes for the case of a variable inductor. We can change the value of the inductor. We, we can change the value of the inductor to whatever desirable value that we need. So here this particular resistor is made to a variable resistor and this particular inductor is made to a variable inductor. So therefore let this be L1 and this be R1. This be R2 and this be L2 and let this be R3 and let this be R4. So now what we do is that we now change the value of this particular resistance and inductance and what we observe is that we see some kind of a deflection in the galvanometer. But when we obtain a balanced condition what we observe is that there will be no deflection at the galvanometer. This is because no current flows through this particular galvanometer in the balanced condition. Same as that of what we saw in the previous video in the case of measuring a resistance. So if you guys haven't watched that video, I'll leave the link to that video in the description below. Do check that out. So here when we obtain a balanced condition, what we observe is that the potential difference between these two points is equal to zero. That is, there is no difference in the potential between these two points. So hence, as a result of this, no current flows through this particular galvanometer. And therefore, what we observe is that in the case of a balanced condition, the total impedance ratio, if the total impedance here is say Z1 and the total impedance here is a Z2, then Z1 by Z2 is equal to Z3 by Z4. That is what we obtain in the case of a balanced condition. That is impedance of this region divided by impedance of this region is equal to impedance of this region divided by impedance of this region. But here what we observe is that the impedance Z1 is given as this particular resistance R1 plus J omega L1. That is the impedance Z1 of this particular branch. Therefore similarly the impedance Z2 can be obtained as R2 plus J omega L2 and now Z3 is simply but R3 because there is only resistance there and Z4 is equal to R4. So these are the values of Z1, Z2, Z3 and Z4. Here Z1, Z4 is equal to Z3, Z2. On cross multiplying this, this is what we get and now substituting this over here, we get R1 plus J omega L1 into Z4 is R4 is equal to Z3 is R3. So R3 into this particular R2 plus J omega L2. And now on expanding this we get R1 R4 plus J omega L1 R4 is equal to R2 R3 plus J omega R3 L2. So this is what we get. So here what we observe is that these are the real parts and these 
are the imaginary parts. So now on equating the real parts we get R1 R4 is equal to R2 R3 and through this we can find the value of this particular resistance as R1 is equal to R2 R3 divided by R4. So here like this we can find the value of the unknown resistance R1 if we don't know the value of this particular resistance. And similarly by equating the imaginary parts we can obtain omega L1 R4 is equal to omega R3 L2. So here omega and omega gets cancelled and therefore the value of the unknown inductance L1 is equal to R3 L2 divided by R4. So this is the value of the unknown inductance of this particular inductor. This is how we find the value of the unknown value of a particular inductance of a particular inductor using a Maxwell's bridge. As simple as that guys. So this thus is how we can find the value of the unknown inductance of a particular inductor. As simple as that. Simply with the help of a Maxwell's bridge, we can find the value of the unknown inductance of a particular inductor. Just by using this formula, by just adjusting the value of these particular inductance and the resistor, by obtaining a balanced condition, we can find the value of this particular inductance using the formula L1 is equal to R3 L2 by R4. As simple as that. So I hope you guys now have a clear understanding of how you can find the value of the inductance of a particular inductor using a Maxwell's bridge. And if you guys found this video informative, do hit the like button and join our community by hitting that subscribe button. So we'll be discussing about the further topics in the upcoming videos. So stay tuned, stay subscribed. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.